Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Awan. I'm the Associate Vice Chair of Education at the University of Maryland Medical Center. I want to talk today about how to read a foot MRI. This has been a topic that has been recommended by a lot of my friends and colleagues in California. I've done literally every other joint or part of the body except for the foot. So I want to do and finish my MRI series with an MRI examination of the foot. So the way I do this is I usually take a look and start with the axial long axis images through the foot. And I always start with the T1s because on the T1s, you're looking to see if there's any marrow replacing or marrow proliferative process, right? So the bones should be nice and bright and fatty, right? On T1, there should really be no red marrow in the foot, right? And there should be no, you know, signal that's hypo intense or iso intense to the muscle because that would suggest a marrow proliferative or a marrow replacing process. And you want to look at every bone, right? And I think the long axis axials give you a nice gestalt of the entire foot, right? So you can see here along the first ray, the first distal phalanx, the proximal phalanx, the first metatarsal. Uh, you can see the same thing for the second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. You see them all very well and very nicely, right? You can look to see if there's any, you know, hypo intense line to suggest a fracture. You can look at the, you know, this here is the middle, excuse me, the medial, the middle, and the lateral cuneiforms. This is the cuboid right here. We have the navicular, the tailor head, uh, the cuboid here, the calcaneus, right? You can see all the bones here, right? Very well. Um, you can see the alignment at the TMT joints here, right? Um, you can look here at the list frank ligament that we'll talk about in a second on the T2 fat set image, right? The list frank ligament runs between the medial cuneiform and the base of the second metatarsal, very important for the stability of the foot. All of these things can be seen very well here, right? You can look at the muscles here, make sure there's no T1 hyperintense signal to suggest atrophy. All of these are seen very well here on the T1 weighted image. We can turn to the T2 fat sat uh, long axis axial images. And you're looking here to see if there's any bone marrow edema, right? Uh, to suggest a fracture, to suggest uh, you know AVN, to suggest degenerative changes. Uh, we can see you know, most of the bones look completely normal here, which is great. But what we can see is a little bit of cystic change here along the calcaneo cuboid joint, suggesting mild degenerative changes. I believe there's a little bit of cystic change here at the first empty feature, which we'll see better on the, the sagittal plane. Uh, but the rest of the marrow signal looks excellent, right? There's no marrow contusion, no fracture, no marrow proliferative or replacing processes. Nothing like that. You also want to scrutinize the joint spaces to make sure there's no big joint effusions. And we don't see any, right? You look at the, you know, the MTP joints, the IP joints, you know, the TMT joints here, you know, the navicular cuneiform, talonavicular, calcaneo cuboid, all the joints, none of them have large fluid collections, okay? Another thing that's very important on the uh, axial long axis images is to assess the collateral ligaments. So all of the MTP and all of the IP joints have, you know, a uh, medial and a lateral collateral ligament here, right? So, you know, this here, this curvilinear dark structure here between the first metatarsal head and the base of the first uh, proximal phalanx is the medial collateral ligament at the first MTP joint. This here is the lateral collateral ligament here at the first MTP joint. All of the MTP joints have them. All of the IP joints have them. The PIP, the DIP joints have them. The the IP joint at the first digit has it as well. These are best seen on the axial long axis images, right? You're looking to see if there's a a sprain if, to suggest thickening, a tear, a partial tear, a complete tear, which would be fluid bright signal, you know, disrupting the collateral ligaments. These are best seen here. I also like to look at the Lisfranc ligament, right? Which is again, this ligament or this dark structure that runs between the medial cuneiform and the base of the second metatarsal. This has a volar, central, and a dorsal component. It's said that the dorsal component is the most important for stability, uh, but you can really see the list rank ligament very well. You can see it on the uh, coronal plane as well, but I think I find that the axial long axis is very nice to look at this list rank ligament, which is, of course, very important for stability. Now, this patient instantly does have this, you know, multi-lobulated ganglion cyst right here, right, adjacent to the first metatarsal neck. That's an incidental finding that we see here. Uh, typically, patients aren't going to have that, but, you know, the, you can have ganglion cysts in the foot, you know, very common, right? So that this patient does have that here. So those are the most important things that I think, you know, we look at when we look at the uh, 
you know, the axial long axis image. Of course, we, you know, we did the ankle already. We can see the three anterior extensor tendons, tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus right here. The three posterior flexor tendons, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus. Notice that the tibialis posterior is twice the size of the flexor digitorum longus as it should be. You have the two peroneal tendons here, the peroneus longus, that's more uh, lateral, and the peroneus brevis, that's a little bit more inner. And then, of course, this is the Achilles tendon right here, right? So, you know, we saw that in the ankle, so we're not going to go over that. We can see here, you know, these here are the syndesmotic ligaments or the anterior tibia fibular, posterior tibia fibular. This is the ATFL anterior talofibular, posterior talofibular ligament, right? The calcaneal fibular ligament runs deep to the peroneal tendons, which is, you know, better seen maybe on the coronal plane. But, you know, we went over those already with the ankle, so we're not going to spend too much time on that. But that's typically how I, what I look for on the, on this plane. But now when we turn to the sagittal plane, you know, this is a nice view to kind of just look at, you know, the Achilles tendon again, you know, the plantar fascia, which inserts onto the, the plantar albinosis along the plantar aspect of the calcaneus. Of course, the Achilles tendon inserts onto the calcaneal tuberosity here posteriorly. This here is Kager's fat pad. You want to, again, just kind of look at the marrow, make sure that there's no hypo intense signal. Beautiful look at the fibula, the tibia, the tailor dome. This here, again, is a sinus tarsi that should have fat here. Remember that the, uh, inferior medial and lateral roots of the extensor retinaculum run through here as does the cervical ligament and the talocalcaneal interosseous ligament. There should be nice fat here if there is not. If it's obliterated with fibrous tissue or dark tissue, that's evidence of sinus tarsi syndrome. The sagittal is also good to look at the alignment at the talonavicular joint right here and the cuneiform bones. Often if there's a Lisfranc fracture dislocation, you'll have offset of the metatarsal with respect to the cuneiform. Sometimes the Oftentimes, the metatarsal will be dorsal with respect to the cuneiform bones. Uh, we look here at the IP joints here. You know, very nice example, very nice look at, you know, the alignment here. And I want to come to the sagittal stir images and show you a very important structure that I think is very key on the sagittal plane. So I'm going to come to the first MTP joint. Now, this area here, this is the first MTP joint between the metatarsal head, first proximal phalanx, and this is a sesamoid bone. The plantar plate is a fibrous thickening of the plantar joint capsule, which is very important for stability in the, in the foot. And it runs between the metatarsal neck and extends to the level of the sesamoid, the metatarsal head, and inserts on along the base of the first proximal phalanx, right? So it's this dark black structure. Now, part of this is the you know, flexor tendon here, but, you know, part of this dark black line, which you're seeing here, is a plantar plate. And you can assume that the plantar plate has been disrupted if you see a lot of edema or hemorrhage or bright signal here disrupting these dark fibers. And oftentimes the first proximal phalanx is subluxed dorsally with respect to the first metatarsal head. That's known as a turf toe. You may have heard that term before. A turf toe is usually rupture of the plantar plate, which is an important structure when we look at the foot. You know, very important and better seen and best seen really on a sagittal view of the foot. Okay, I always look at it on the sagittal plane, right? But you're looking at, you know, nice images here of the, of the joint. You can see the extensor tendons, which are dorsal, right? You have the extensor hallucis uh, longus inserting onto the dorsal base of the first distal phalanx right there. You have the flexor uh, hallucis longus and brevis here. The hallucis longus inserts onto the volar base of the distal phalanx. The flexor hallucis brevis, medial and lateral head inserts onto the volar base of the first proximal phalanx here, right? So you can see all that here. You can see some of the musculature here. The alignment is very good and very well seen here on these images. I want to come here to the, you know, coronal short axis images, which let me just window this so that you guys can see it a little better. Okay. So if we come here, you know, this is a, really a nice look at, you know, the, the Taylor dome, obviously, right? You want to make sure there's no osteochondral injury. We already talked about the ankle and the deltoid ligament, the superficial and deep components of the deltoid ligament, which you can see here very well. Uh, you know, you can see some of the muscles here. Again, this here is the abductor hallucis flexor digitorum brevis, abductor digiti minimi. These make up the medial, central, and lateral cords of the plantar fascia. So this here is a central cord of the plantar fascia, the most important part of the plantar fascia. This uh, dark line, it's hard to see, but here is the, you know, medial cord. This is the lateral cord right here. This muscle here is the you know, the quadratus plantae right here. Okay, this is the tarsal tunnel that it has the posterior tubular nerve artery and vein here. 
that runs here. So in all these structures, this is the accessory digitorum brevis muscle that runs right here, but these are the anterior accessor tendons. So you can see all that here on this plane here, okay? And what I wanna come to is I wanna spend a little bit more time on the coronal short axis stir images, because we're looking to see, first of all, we already looked at the bones, you know, we saw that, you know, degenerative changes are subchondral cysts along the calcaneal cuboid joint. But more importantly, I wanna look at the muscles, right? I wanna to look to make sure that the muscles here are all normal. Uh, they're a normal and gray signal intensity. There's maybe some minimal uh, T2 hyper signal along the abductor halysis here, but otherwise it looks okay. You know, again, this is the abductor halysis, flexor digitorum brevis, abductor digiti minimi. This can be involved in Baxter's neuropathy or neuropathy of the, you know, Baxter nerve, which is a branch of the inferior calcaneal nerve, which comes off the lateral plantar nerve, right? The quadratus plantae right here. And then as we come here, all of these muscles are the intrinsic musculature of the foot, which consists of the lumbricals and the interosseous muscles. There's plantar and dorsal interosseous muscles that are kind of coating the metatarsal shafts and the phalanges, right? Uh, always look at the muscles, make sure that they're nice and gray on the T2 weighted images. And then I also take a look at all the tendons, right? So along the volar or the plantar aspect of the foot, these are all the flexor tendons, right? And on the dorsal aspect, these are all the extensor tendons. So let's start with the, the first digit is a little bit more complicated, right? So this here is the, you know, we have the Tom, Dick, and Harry, right? Flexor digit, uh, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor halysis longus, right? And as we come here, this is a flexor halysis longus. And at the first MTP joint, there's actually five tendons that come here at the first MTP joint, right? So the middle one is the flexor halysis longus. The one just medial and lateral to it is the flexor halysis brevis medial head, flexor halysis brevis lateral head, right? These two are gonna start onto the volar base of the first proximal phalanx. This one here, the flexor halysis longus is starting onto the volar base of the first distal phalanx. And then along the periphery, this is the AB ductor halysis. And this here is the AD ductor halysis. These insert onto the you know, proximal phalanges as well. So there's actually five tendons. So starting medial to lateral, we have the AB ductor halysis, flexor halysis brevis medial head, flexor halysis longus, flexor halysis brevis lateral head, AD adductor halysis right here, right? So five tendons come here at the first MDP joint, okay? And then the second through fifth digits have you know, flexor digitorum, uh, brevis, that's more superficial, going to second, third, fourth, and fifth digit, and then deeper flexor digitorum longus, right? Second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. Those are all coming in here, and you can see them all coming here. Make sure that they're not torn with bright signal, or make sure there's no tenosynovitis or fluid distending their tendon sheets here, right? So that's what you want to look for. Dorsally, we have the extensor tendon, so the extensor halysis longus, and turning onto the dorsal base of the first distal phalanx, uh, just lateral to it, you have the extensor halysis brevis inserting onto the dorsal base of the first proximal phalanx. Similarly, you have extensor digitorum longus and extensor digitorum brevis. The brevis is always lateral to the uh, longus, right? Second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. You want to make sure and trace them, make sure that there's no tendon tear, no fluid distending any of their tendon sheets, right? So that's what you want to look for. Another key thing that you want to look for in the foot, when you get to the metatarsal heads, oftentimes you can have fluid, you know, this is, I think, a vessel, but you can have fluid layering between the metatarsal heads. That's known as intermetatarsal bursitis, right? When you have fluid in the first, second, third, or fourth inner space, there's a bursa that lives there, which is the intermetatarsal bursa, right? So intermetatarsal bursitis, very common. Now, the fluid should not go deeper or more plantar to the, meta, the plantar aspect of the metatarsal heads. There's a ligament that you can't really see on MR that's called the transverse intermetatarsal ligament, right? that runs right here, right? If the fluid goes beyond the confines of this, you know, intermetatarsal ligament, then that's a Morn's neuroma, right? So a Morn's neuroma or perineural fibrosis of the plantar digital nerve typically happens at the third inner space. That's when you have like a teardrop shaped T1 dark mass, T2 heterogeneous mass that runs kind of plantar to the metatarsal heads. That's the key. It has to come plantar to the metatarsal heads. If it's just above the metatarsal heads and it kind of runs kind of in a linear fashion like this signal, that's intermetatarsal bursitis, okay? So that's a way to differentiate intermetatarsal bursitis from a Morton's neuroma. Very key on the foot, okay? Um, so we look at that. I tend to look at that. And then, you know, you look at all the tendons, right? You can see part of this here is the, you know, peroneus longus inserting onto the base of the first metatarsal. 
you can see, you know, part of, so some of these peroneal tendencies, peroneal sperms and longus have a little bit of tenosynovitis around them. There's some fluid around their tendon sheets. The, you can see that the brevis inserts here onto the base of the fifth metatarsal as, as it should, right? And the longus, of course, goes, you know, curves around and goes to the base of the first metatarsal, right? And we did, we looked at all the other tendons as well. So, you know, that's a nice overview of how you look at the bones, the joints, you know, the list rank ligament, right? The uh, collateral ligaments, all of the tendons, flexor tendons, accessor tendons, abductor, adductor tendons, right? Uh, the muscles and the soft tissues, right? You want to make sure that the sub-Q fat, you know, there's no stranding or thickening of the skin to suggest cellulitis and so forth. So uh, that's a very general approach to how I approach the MRI of the foot. I hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope you benefit from this. Thank you so much.